Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna show you how to use the tiny lens texture inside of Photoshop to create metallic and holographic effects. Later in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get this free download, so make sure to stick around for that. And if you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And of course, visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you about coloring for a minute because the secret to getting a holographic effect is to use very bright colors. So I'm gonna change this to maybe like a, a green would be great. You have to keep these colors up here very bright and they have to be opposite colors. So if I'm using um, this green, then this pink color would be an opposite color. So I want you to see the three variations that we made on this tiny lens. So we have, uh, we're gonna start with this one. This is the large crosshatch texture. This is more of like a circle, tight circle pattern. And then this one is a variation of the two. Okay, so we're gonna start off here with a 1000 by 1000 pixel document. And I've already got the colors that I'm gonna use set up over here, uh, but quickly, the background color that I'm using is E226EF, and the foreground color is 18CEE9. Okay, when we have that set up, we can come up to Filter. Let's make sure that layer is selected. Come up to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Once we have those clouds rendered, we can come back up to Filter, Distort, and we're gonna choose Glass. Inside the Glass menu, we're gonna make a few changes here to the settings. We're gonna bring our distortion all the way up to 20. We'll bring our smoothness to about six. We're gonna change the texture to Tiny Lens. And then we're gonna change the scale here to about 90 percent click OK so this is our first holographic texture I'm going to add another blank layer and we're going to do the same thing we're coming up to filter render clouds we're going to go to filter again distort glass and we're going to be using that that tiny lens texture throughout these I'm just going to show you some different adjustments to get some more interesting effects so that was our first one. The second one, we're gonna go ahead and leave that distortion all the way up to 20. We're gonna bring our scale, or I'm sorry, our smoothness down to one, and we're gonna scale it down to about 60. So this is gonna give us this circle pattern. We'll click OK. So this is our second texture. I'm gonna create another new layer here, and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna come up to Filter, Render Clouds, filter and then we'll go to distort glass and we'll make a few more changes to this keeping that distortion up to 20 on this one we're going to bring our smoothness to three and we're going to take our scale all the way down so this is going to give you a cross between that cross hatch and the circle pattern that we have i'm going to click ok The silver, we have gold, and then of course we can create any other color just by adding this hue and saturation layer. And I'm gonna start with the metallic, so I'm gonna uh, put up a new layer here. And this time I'm gonna show you how to do gold, and then I'll show you how to do um, other colors as well quickly. So let's start with the gold. Uh, the first color that we're gonna use is 704B0B. And then our other color is F0D6A8. Click OK. Okay, I wanna bring your attention here to these two colors. You can see that uh, neither one of these colors is actual gold, but uh, it is here in the gold family so if I came up here um, this is more of a gold tone but what I'm looking for here are the shadows and the highlights I'm not necessarily looking for gold in this background foreground color I'm looking at uh, the darkest and the lightest colors 
and then we're going to come up to filter render clouds and once we have that gold texture there we can go back in and do the same thing we did before distort glass and now we've got a gold metallic texture come over here and just reset these colors to black and white I'm going to add a new layer there and we're going to go through our process and filter distort glass once you have this silver color we're going to add a hue and saturation layer so we'll come down here and choose hue and saturation we're going to clip it actually to this silver and then we're going to make a few adjustments make sure to click on colorize to get that color as well okay i'm going to get as close as i can uh, to what we had before but i want to show you the difference in these two golds so if i turn that off you can see that we have this nice uniform gold color and it does have a little bit of sheen to it and it looks it looks nice it's subtle uh, but if you're looking for something more dramatic then uh, doing it this way so if you want like ultra shine here you can do that and then uh, of course we can always change these colors so if you want like a pink maybe rose gold you can get that here as well so once you make them if you want to save them as patterns you can come up to edit and define pattern and then we'll we'll call this tiny gold so we have that in there keep in mind your texture is 1000 by 1000 pixels right now um, this is not a repeating pattern because you have all of the variation and highlights and shadows um, it's going to be pretty difficult to get a repeating pattern out of this it is possible but it does require a lot of adjustment layers a lot of clone stamping and it is time consuming to do it so if you want something bigger it's easier just to make the actual pattern bigger um, but for the most part i think this is going to work we're going to go ahead and add another layer on top of all this i'm going to fill that with black because I want to show you what this will look like inside of text and I tend to use these nice um, block sans serifs for this because um, you can see that texture very clearly in this type of font so I'm going to go to the pattern and we're going to add that make sure so this is the pattern that we just created now if you do see a seam let's find somewhere where there is a seam okay right there so if you're putting this pa this uh, pattern inside of your text and you see a seam like this you can easily if you are in the pattern overlay you're in these layer styles you're actually in the pattern overlay and you see the screen you can come up to your canvas and start moving that texture around unless you have them unlinked this is um, the only place that you're going to be able to adjust where your texture is inside of the text so you can kind of move it around and see where it is you'd like it to be to learn more about working inside of photoshop watch one or more of the videos up on the screen right now and don't forget to like share and subscribe until next time thanks for watching